Hello everyone and welcome back to the X-Ring. I hope you're doing well today. What we're going to do is we're going to take a look at the Falcor Defense with the 7 Short Action and the ROC chassis or the Rock chassis. So definitely stick around. All right, so before we get started with this review, I do want to preface this with how all of this came about on reviewing the Falcor Defense Rifle. So a couple months ago, I was privy to go to a private event and I was talking to some editors and some writers um, and quite a few had a lot of long range experience. And I was sitting across from Sean Utley, who is a editor, does a lot of freelance work for different magazines, and he is a competitive long range shooter out in Arizona. Well, he asked me a simple question, and that was, what is your favorite action? And, you know, I lost it there for a second because I was like, well, I guess I have more of the TL3s than anything else. I really like that action. Um, it's very smooth. And, you know, you heard all the common names, you know, like your Curtis and your Impacts and, you know, everything else. But there's a name that kept coming up, not only with Sean, but with some other guys. And that was Falcor. They kept asking me, have you ever felt one of those? And in fact, I had a chance to feel one at the CD match last year. And I, I remember how smooth that bolt was on that rifle. So I called Kenny over at Desert Precision Gunworks and I asked him what he thought about the Falcor actions. And he's like, dude, those things are crazy smooth. So I had to have one. So I called the guys over at Falcor. I did reach out to them. Uh, we started talking and we met up at SHOT Show. And fortunately enough for me, they were able to get me a seven short action with the Rock chassis. So this is a factory built gun. Now, it didn't have the tan Cerakote. It's not really indicative of what they do. They do Cerakoting, but it's uh, a lot more involved than this. But I did reach out to Wayne Hammer because he was able to get me something that was very conservative, did it very quickly, and it's basically a two-tone FDE. So you can't really see the pattern here with this lighting, but it was raining out there, and I didn't want to get water all over the lens and everything. So what we're going to do is we're going to review this rifle starting from the back all the way to the front. We'll talk about all the features, and I'll throw in some close-ups as I'm getting to them. So factory built gun from Falcor. This is going to run you somewhere around $5,000 for a barreled action with the trigger and the chassis, the rock chassis. Let's talk about the rock chassis first. So starting at the back at the butt plate, one of the things I like is there's no rattling. I mean, I can tap on it here and I can feel it all the way through the chassis at the end. So it is secure. You can also adjust it for rise as well as cant because I usually run these a little higher and then I also cant them slightly to the right just to fit in my shoulder pocket a little bit better. That's secured with two standard screws here. Coming forward, you're going to see the bag rider here. The bag rider is nice because they do have this polymer insert that covers the aluminum so you're not scratching up your Cerakote. And I will say that all of their aluminum on the Rock chassis, all the aluminum they use is 7075. They're not using 6061, so they're using a great grade of aluminum. And of course, they do hard coat all of that before they even think about Cerakoting it. So all that's done underneath it. Coming forward from this, you actually have a nine position adjustable length of pull. And it's nice. It's set up as a Picatinny. You'll use two hex screws here. The two hex screws will loosen it up and you can relocate it. You're not going to be able to slide on your length of pull, which is actually good because you're not going to have any slippage or anything like that. They do offer optional weight kits for this. Uh, I don't need it because this rifle is actually really balanced in here, about four inches forwards of the magwell here. So that's perfect for a bag rider or anything. They do have an AR style connection here to the chassis. So it will st still have the castle nut, and you have this piece here, this solid billet piece that has two QDs. Now, coming up from there, you have the cheek riser. What's nice about this is this cheek riser with a quarter turn, I can adjust this on the fly. 
I do wish that they made a way for it to slide off the back, but it can't do it because of the channel groove here that this slides in, and you have to actually remove the cheek riser first before you can take this off. Now the cheek riser, you do have to have two Allen keys to be able to adjust the height, but it's very minimalistic, and I actually like that. I don't need, like anything that's too large up here. So that's going to be how you would adjust your cheek riser. Now, you also have a replaceable level here, and the, the location's perfect. Even with your scope, in this way, you can look straight into it. They've angled it, and it is replaceable in case you do damage one of those. As far as their grip, this is their proprietary grip. There's actually three screws on the front of this. This is an AR-compatible grip, and those three screws allow you to lengthen or open up this grip if you like. Coming forwards from there, you do have a thumb perch. Now this thumb perch is a 15-way adjustable thumb perch. You can move it forwards and rearwards, and you can also adjust the cant on it. As far as the magazine release, it is an ambidextrous magazine release, but you do have your th standard thumb release here. You do have a very generous mag well. This is supposed to fit the AICS style mags as well as the AW magazines. I can't get my AW magazines to fit in here, but it could be a magazine adjustment. But that's what I saw on their description was this was also compatible with the AW magazines. Now, right now, we're just sticking with the chassis. It is also convertible to left-handed. You have an insert here that you can remove. Coming forwards, you have an Arca Swiss rail. Now, you might say, well, that looks kind of short. And one of the things that's really ingenious about this system here is this is the factory configuration, but you can lengthen it. And all you have to do is on this end here, you have an handguard protector. It has four locating pins. So you locate it in and then you put your internal weight in and that secures this end piece. If you want a longer handguard, you can buy that extension and that will give you more length to this. You also have a barrel shroud or a cover, and this is supposed to reduce mirage. It's actually going to be one of the things I gig them on, because while I do love the chassis, one of the things I don't like is no way to attach any type of uh, forward mounted like IR or anything like that. Uh, if I wanted to attach that or a thermal unit, I have no way of attaching it. I've been online. I haven't seen an option to have a Picatinny here or anything for an attachment. As far as the Arca Swiss on the bottom, they've also integrated the R-Lock. Some of you guys might not be familiar with the R-Lock. It is by Really Right Stuff. And Really Right Stuff does the SOAR division for the Really Right Stuff tripods and all that. But they've come up with an Arca Swiss clamp that will locate into these holes. So it still uses the Arca Swiss, but then you can lock it into one of these dimples so it doesn't move. So that's pretty much the chassis. The chassis is going to run you by itself around $1,500, depending on the options. They also offer an additional buttstock that has the conventional roll wheel for length of pull and also your cheek riser. Now, the chassis isn't what we were talking about. What we were talking about was the actual action, that seven short action. Now, this is machined out of one solid piece of 416 stainless steel, and then all steel components are nitrided. That's one of the things I like about Falcors, they're putting that good protective coating on there. And it also has an integral 20 MOA rail machined into the actual action. The action is going to run you between $1,400 to $1,500, depending on short action or long action configuration. And it does have a DLC coated bolt. It is unbelievably smooth, guys. And I know smoothness isn't everything, but it is extremely smooth. The bolt itself has a lightened firing pin, and they do this by using an aluminum shank on the back of the firing pin itself. It also has wire EDM cut lugs, as well as an M16 style extractor, and an integral lug as well. Now, right here, you do have your bolt stop but it's a vertical bolt stop. If you've ever had a rifle that broke its bolt stop, you know how hard it is to work one of those actions because it slides out and comes all the way out. So by having that vertical bolt stop, it enables it to be stronger. So I don't think you're gonna have any issues with that. You'll notice some raceways here. So at three and nine o'clock, they do have overpressure raceways. They just look good the way they did it. You know, almost all of your actions are gonna have overpressure raceways. And this is outfitted with a Bartland Prefit, a 26 inch, six creed more on the end here you're going to notice their proprietary muzzle brake this is an aries runs about 160 dollars or so it's very very effective very flat shooting but that's pretty much it with the factory build 
It does come with a Trigger Tech Special. Trigger Tech's one of my favorite triggers, but I'm probably going to replace the Special with a Diamond. While it's a great trigger, I think I just prefer being able to dial it down a little lower uh, with that Diamond. So without costing you guys any more time, let's go ahead and get this thing on the range and shoot it. All right, so it's pretty gusty today, so I'm not sure of what kind of winds we're going to have, but what we're going to do is I've got a camera down range, we'll just shoot it at, we're at about 97 yards because I was going to be in the shade there. I do have a Magpul AICS magazine, and I do have the MDT polymer. I have been running this with the MDT steel mag, and it has been flawless. I do have an Inter Accuracy International AW mag, and... Although they say it works with the AWs, this won't fit in here. I don't know if it's a magazine adjustment or what, but I can't get it in there, so I thought you guys might want to know that. So let's go ahead and clean cold bore. Let's go ahead and shoot this at 100 yards. We'll do three shots. We'll use the MDT magazine, and there's a target down range that was used by someone else, but target number one looks like it's going to be the one. It'll be the center target. Let's see if I can get everything set up here. Get our height right. That should work. All right, so here we go. Um, target number one, center, including the cold bore. All right, here we go. Okay, so nine o'clock in the center. Good enough for center. Twelve o'clock center. And same hole as the first shot. Okay, so that's three shots. Since we have it on camera, let's go ahead and load two more up. We'll just do a five shot group. Guys, remember, this is not even hand loads. This is just factory ammo. I mean, this thing is a shooter. So the magazine fits. We've got a little bit of wobble left and right, but not the end of the world there. Same target. Same holes the second one. And three o'clock so guys that's a five shot group it's probably going to measure 0.5 or so maybe a little less but right out of the box i mean this thing is a tack driver i mean for the baker match i could probably just shoot this right here and call it good as a matter of fact i'm going to go ahead and let you guys in on a secret i did order a case of this as a just in case in case i didn't have a chance to reload um to be able to shoot the match it's always good to have that even though hand loads are going to probably do better and i'll be able to get different velocities i know that chronographing this rifle with that ammunition i'm looking somewhere around 29 20 feet per second shooting a 108 so that's plenty good enough so let me go ahead and run the data and we'll see if we can run some uh, steels out here and see how well it does all right so i don't have much time behind this rifle so let me go ahead and confirm some data. I just ran it on Streelock on approximate velocity. And let's see if I can go ahead and make some impacts. We'll just start at uh, 400, which it's calling for 1.6. And at 400, we have a third IPSC. So not crazy small, but small enough. I'm gonna go for the water line here, just to confirm. And here we go dead on the waterline impact now we're going to go 500 yards 500 yards will be 2.4 and there is an eight inch steel i believe out there impact velocity is running a little bit high so i could go over the top at 600 so let me check it at 600 just to confirm before we try to do some positional stuff so here we go 600 Yep, just over the top. So definitely need to chew this data out. We'll just call this three flat. Impact, that was actually good. So let me, uh, guys, I actually have a new product. It's called uh, 
Omnis by AccuFire Tech. It's a digital spotting scope. Let me go ahead and see if I can put on the targets at 600 so you can kind of see this. And let me go ahead and true out this velocity on Straylock. Uh, so this is the Omnis digital spotting scope by AccuFire Tech. And I think it's gonna add a lot to the channel. I'm gonna try to get you guys some good footage. This is not gonna be a full review of this, uh, but basically it's about a $1,500 unit, but it has 30 to 120X zoom on it. It's very, very clear. You can do on-screen, you can do recording, you can do videos. And let's go ahead and see what this looks like hitting those targets at distance. Let me go ahead and get it set up. All right, guys, look at that image there. That's on 120 power zoom. It is a digital zoom, but crystal clear. All right, so I have the Omnis going back there. We've got 600 yards. I've got two rounds of the Hornady. We might still be about a tenth high or so, but we'll go ahead and go 600. It's the hardest target out here. We'll see if you guys can see that downrange. Here we go. Impact. We'll go to the one to the right, which is an 8-inch steel. Impact, impact. Super easy. Let's try to do some positional work with this thing. All right, guys, so unfortunately, that digital spotter with a minimum of 30 power, I can't get the full range of view. So I'm just going to video the 600 yard targets and we'll just do some positional work here and no rear bag or anything like that. We'll just use this, we'll work on different positions. So we'll start at 400. How's that? Here we go. No plate or anything. We want to do a reverse kneeling on something like this at 400 yards. I'm going to be 1.5. We could hold it, but like I said, I'm just giving you an idea of the rifle, guys. This is 400. That's an impact. And we'll come on up here. We'll go 500, which is 2.2. Two. We'll go for the little circle. impact and we will go ahead and let's say we'll just go into the little v here we'll see how this this chassis works a little odd position we'll go 600 which we said was going to be about three mils i think we should be good here just off right We'll say we have to skip that target because it's move, hit or miss. Impact. And then I believe there's one at 700. Let me put this up top. I haven't confirmed the dope on that yet. But 700 will be 3.9 according to this. Oh, she's a, she's a small one. impact she's balanced pretty well guys uh really like the rifle it's solid my bag keeps rolling off this uh, painted surface but that's something you'd have to deal with but yeah only missed the one shot out of there and that was probably just me or just a bad wind call but this falcor is pretty darn impressive guys i like it as as far as the balance it's there i can put a gray ops plate on here and the balance points about four to five inches forward to the magwell so let me go ahead and try to get you some slow-mos of the action and how smooth this is while shooting it uh 2.2 mils at 500 impact Drop them in there. 600. All right, we're gonna go bottom right for grouping again. I do have some hand loads that I'm testing out. I don't know if they're gonna be any good, but we're gonna try it and see. I don't know if it's gonna like this jump or not. We'll go for the bottom right. 
target, which is going to be target number five. Target five. Wow, I didn't even fill that chamber. Pinwheel, 12 o'clock. All right, other than that last shot, I mean, that was decent enough. Like I said, I'm still playing around with low development, but that four shot definitely kicked up there. 400 yards was calling for 1.5. Let me go down to, let me go 1.4. That's in the cranium. Oh, magazine stuck up. Cranium. So my mag is getting stuck with the OAL. So yeah, definitely. I'm gonna have to bump those back just a little bit. Got them run out a little bit too much. I was trying to push it and see. Headshot, they are favoring left side a little bit. Headshot, man, we are out. Let me try a different mag. All right, so let me try the mag pull mag, and we're gonna do headshots at 500 yards. And yeah, I actually have a little more clearance with this mag pull AICS than I do on the MDT. So at 500 yards, it's calling for 2 2. That's probably gonna be close. So let's see if we can get a headshot. I'm looking straight through bushes. Isn't that the best shot there is? Here we go. So definitely over the top, that's gonna to be about two mils at 500. Here we go. There we go. In the neck. In the cranium. In the neck all day long so i just need to verify some data but man this falcor shoots guys remember it's a bartland pre-fit man this thing is a hammer it truly is oh target's moving on me that's a pinwheel bullseye Let's see if we can follow that up almost same hole So, not too bad. Like I said, it started walking off to the right just a little bit. We do have some gusty winds out there. I'm sure you guys can see it on the camera. But just based off that with Hornady Factory, let's see if we can hit some targets out there at some kind of distance. Let's see what happens. Let's go 600. We're going to try to work this bolt pretty quickly. So, here we go. That's two in a row. That's on a 10 inch steel and then also an eight inch steel at 600. And like I said, this thing is a freaking hammer. Pretty impressed with it. All right, I hope you enjoyed that review of the Falcor Defense 7 short action with the rock chassis. Now, if I had to pick a couple of things that I don't like about the rifle, because you guys know I like the rifle, the couple things that I don't like about the rifle would be, one, I can't slide this off the back on the cheek riser. That's not a deal breaker, though. One of the other things is there are no QDs located here. Now, that's simply fixed by just taking one of the M locks and using a QD attachment. But if I've got external weights here, which they do sell for these rifles as well, I'm going to be taking up a spot with that. So I wish they would have just machined one, you know, maybe here in the end for the extension, if it was strong enough to actually hold it, which it should be, because you've got four locator pins and then also two screws, which are located here for your internal weight. Other than that, the only other thing is price. Now, 
Quality is not cheap, we know that, but we are in the same price point as an Accuracy International, like an ATX, because an ATX is about 5250, and this is gonna run you right at $5,000 the way that it sits without changing out the butt stock or anything like that. So with that in mind, it is at the higher end of the price point, but I can't deny the fact that this thing shoots. It loves factory ammunition. Um, it'll shoot it right out of the box. You guys saw that with some of the groupings that we did. And I think it's a great, great rifle. I just wish the price was a little bit lower, but like I said, I can't control that. Remember they're doing all the coatings, all the hard coat and the Cerakote. So you're getting a lot, of, a lot of stuff and a lot of different features that you wouldn't get out of some of the other manufacturers. So guys, I hope you enjoyed that review of this rifle. I hope you guys have a great week. Please hit that subscribe button if you do like watching the channel. It'll help me out. You guys take care. Have a good one.